Newton's universal law of gravitation. Remember, Newton didn't discover gravity. He just was the one that realized that gravity applies to any objects anywhere in space. Uh, but he also realized that the gravitational force between two objects depended on two things. The first thing he found that the gravitational force is directly proportional to the mass of each object. So two larger objects are going to have a stronger gravitational force than two small objects. He also found that it's inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. What does that mean? That means that the Earth and the Sun have a gravitational force on each other. Uh, if we have a planet the same size as the Earth, but it's twice as far out, out past Neptune or Pluto, it's going to have a much weaker gravitational force interaction with the Sun. So with, with those two concepts, he put together a, a general rule, and that was that force is proportional to the mass of the two objects, m1 times m2, divided by the square of the distance. Now when we say that force is proportional to that, that means that it's not exactly that, it doesn't equal that, but actually we have to multiply this unit by a constant. In this case it's the universal gravitational constant, which we call g. And g is going to equal 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons meters squared over kilograms squared. Um, so how would we use Newton's universal gravitation um, law to solve a problem? Well, let's take two objects in space that are a certain distance from each other. And let's determine the gravitational force between two 100,000 kilogram objects in space that are each 4,000 meters from each other, from the center to center, 4,000 meters apart. Okay? First, we notice with g, that that is a unit, it's so big, we've got it in scientific notation. So I want to convert my whole problem here into scientific notation using exponents. That's going to actually simplify things, because instead of multiplying things together, I can just add and subtract those exponents from each other. And I'll show you how that's done. So let's first say 100,000 kilograms. I want to convert that into scientific units, and I can say that that equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1 times 10 to the fifth kilograms. So 1 times 10 to the fifth kilograms is the scientific notation for that unit. Gets rid of all those zeros. Over here at 4,000 meters, again, I can go 1, 2, 3, and say that 4,000 meters equals 4 times 10 to the third meters. Okay, now I've converted everything to scientific notation. That's going to make it a little easier to get all these big numbers into this equation. Okay, so let's look at the equation. Force of gravity is g times m1 times m2 divided by the distance squared. Okay, so we just need to plug those numbers in. So my force of g is going to equal, again, g is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meters squared over kilogram squared, okay? And we're going to times m1 squared, well, I'm going to square it because it's, uh, my mass is the same, so it's going to be uh, 1 times 10 to the fifth times 1 times 10 to the fifth, so I can just square that. And that is over my distance squared. So d squared here is going to be 4 times 10 to the third. And let's keep our units in here. We have uh, kilograms there, and we have meters there, and that is squared. Okay? So, again, carrying this down, I have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newton meter squared kilogram squared times, and again, 1 times 10 to the fifth squared, again, I can add that, so that's going to equal 1 times 10 to the tenth kilograms squared over 4 times 10 to the third, this is going to be 16 times 10 to the sixth, and then to keep it in scientific notation, I can say 1.6 times 10 to the seventh and my unit there is meters squared, okay? And separating that right there. Now, <clears throat> notice with this 
uh, constant g, I can get rid of some of my units. I have kilograms squared down here. I can cancel that with kilograms squared up there. I've got meters squared down here. I can cancel with meters squared down there. And I have 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 1 times 10 to the negative 10th. So that's going to equal 6.67 times 10 to the negative, I'm sorry, uh, negative 1. So negative 11 plus 10 is 1, OK? Over, and that unit is going to just simply be uh, newtons over 1.6 times 10 to the seventh. And again, to move this up here, I just make this into a negative 7, and I get dividing 6.67 by 1.6, I get 4.16 times 10 to the negative eighth. So that is my gravitational force between these two objects. Now that's a really small number, right? That, again, number is newtons, keeping my units there. Um, and that, that shows that gravitation is really a small force. It's just that we're on such a large planet, Earth, that we have a pretty large mass times our mass to make the gravitational force seem much stronger on Earth. But when you're out in space, it's a relatively weak force.